One of the most useful features in Entrax Studio is MIDI Learn. You can use MIDI Learn to quickly and easily set up your MIDI controller to control various elements of the app. In this video, we'll be taking a deep dive into the MIDI Learn function on Mac, Windows, Android and iOS, showing how many different types of MIDI controllers can be used to enhance your music production workflow. But before we get started, let's first quickly go over what MIDI is. MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface, and it's a protocol for communicating musical information between devices. MIDI allows you to control various aspects of your music, such as the pitch, velocity, and duration of the notes, as well as other parameters like volume and panning. Most electronic musical instruments support MIDI. MIDI controllers, such as keyboards and drum pads, are used to send MIDI data to a device running an app like Entrax Studio, which can receive and interpret the data. Now, onto MIDI Learn. You can use a physical controller, such as a keyboard with faders or a control surface with knobs and buttons, to make controlling stuff that happens inside Entrack faster and more immediate. You can use physical faders and knobs to control effects parameters, track volumes and pans, and buttons to start and stop playback, rewind, and so forth. In this video, we'll use the Akai Mini Mark III, Korg Nano Control, and Bayringer X Touch as example controllers. To use MIDI Learn in Entrax Studio, you'll need to have a MIDI controller connected to your device and selected as an input in Entrax. On iOS and Android, the device will automatically connect. On Android, you may also get a screen asking if you'd like to use the Entrax or Android USB driver to connect the device. We recommend trying both. With the device connected, we can go ahead and use the controller. On Mac and Windows, you can check the controller is connected by going to the Settings menu and selecting MIDI Devices. When a controller is connected, a dialog box will appear asking if we want to use it. Pressing Yes, the MIDI device will be connected. From here, you can select your MIDI controller as an input device. First choose a button, knob or slider that you want to control. And on iOS, we can long press the button that we want to control and we'll see the MIDI Learn option. Similarly on Android, we'll long press on the button we want to control and we'll see MIDI Learn. Or on desktop, right click on the screen control and select MIDI Learn from the menu that pops up. A learning box will appear. Press a key or button, move a knob or strike a pad on your MIDI controller. Once Entrack receives the corresponding MIDI event, the object on the screen will be controlled by your MIDI controller. So let's use one pad on the Akai to trigger the rewind button. We'll long press on the button in Entrack, select MIDI Learn, and then tap the pad to associate it. We'll do the same with the play button. Select MIDI Learn, and choose a pad to associate. Let's look at how you can use MIDI Learn to control plugin parameters. So let's add an effect to our track. Looking through the list of end track effects, we'll choose Tube Distortion. When using an end track built in effect, we can right click or long press on any parameter and select MIDI Learn. Choosing MIDI Learn on the drive control, we'll see the Waiting for MIDI Event pop up box. We'll go ahead and use a knob on the Akai to assign to it. And notice sometimes we can see another pop up saying, Do we want to override an existing mapping to this MIDI event? If we're happy to assign the knob to the drive controller in this case, we'll click yes. We can now control the drive parameter from the controller. Let's also see the same in action on iOS. Using MIDI Learn on third-party plugins works in a slightly different way. We'll first open the plugin that we want to control, and then move the target control. We'll then click the MIDI Learn button, which looks like a small keyboard, in the plugin window. A menu will then appear, listing the latest parameter that was moved for that plugin. We'll go ahead and select it. At the learning prompt, we'll move the MIDI control to finish the association. If you see this pop-up box, click yes to discard any existing control to the event. And now moving the knob on the Akai, 
controls the attack parameter in the FabFilter C2 plugin. On desktop, we can also use the MIDI Learn button to select the parameter that we want to automate from a list of all the available plugin parameters. And note that the list may get big for some third party plugins. So, clicking the parameter drop down for FabFilter C2, we can see a lot of options to control. Let's assign another knob to the threshold setting. Here's how the Korg Nano control can be used to control the Entrack mixer and the transport controls. We can solo tracks, stop, rewind, mute, and play. Notice how tapping the cycle button doesn't do anything, so we can assign it to the cycle button in Entrack Studio by using the MIDI Learn function. We'll long press, select MIDI Learn, and now tap the cycle button on the controller. We'll select Yes to override any existing controls, and we can now see that it works in Entrack Studio. We can also use the faders and the knobs on the cork to control the volume and panning in the mixer. So let's click on the mixer icon in Entrack Studio and have a play with some mix elements. Entrack directly supports dedicated MIDI hardware control surfaces, as many of those are complex devices that send commands to Entrack, but also receive info from Entrack to control the device's LEDs, display and motorized faders. For ease, some of these devices have presets in order to set them up without having to manually use MIDI Learn. Here we have a Bayringer X-Touch, which is a device that uses the Mackie Control Universal Protocol. There are many similar devices on the market, from various manufacturers that use the same protocol. Any of those devices can be configured in Entrack by selecting Mackie Control Universal from the presets drop down box in the MIDI faders slash control box. In the case of the X-Touch, we can see that the mixer faders and the transport controls, play, record and so forth, are being controlled by the hardware MIDI control surface and that moving a fader with the mouse inside Entrack makes the fader physically move on the control surface. The control surface has an array of eight faders and knobs, and there are two bank up slash down buttons to switch the set of tracks that the faders and knobs are associated with. The MIDI faders slash control box from the settings menu is useful to delete controls that you've added using MIDI Learn. If you're not afraid of MIDI controllers, channels, velocities, pitch bends and the like, you may also use the MIDI control box to manually configure the actions associated with the MIDI events generated by the control surface faders and buttons. You don't need to configure this if your control surface is directly supported by Entrack or if just using MIDI Learn works with your device. Now that you know how to use MIDI Learn in Entrack Studio, you can start using your MIDI controller to control various parameters and functions within the software. This can help streamline your workflow and allow you to create music in a more intuitive and expressive way. As ever, please give the video a like and subscribe so we can keep the channel growing, put any questions you have in the comments, and most importantly, have fun making music with Entrek. Cheers.